The web's transformed culture, it's transformed the way we do commerce, it's transformed the way we do advertising, it's transformed the way we do entertainment. But science has been very little affected. You're used to being able to get on the web and find relevant information pretty quickly. And you're used to being able to order books or other materials off of the web. But scientists can't do this when they're trying to cure malaria or to cure cancer. When researchers, doctors, do their research, what they end up finding is a lot of it is in separate silos. Some are private silos, and some are silos that have just been built because that's where people store their information. People around the world who can make progress with scientific research don't have access to them, and the public doesn't have access to them. Science Commons is a nonprofit project, and what we're trying to do is to make the web work for science the way that it works for culture. What Science Commons can do is make research flow more easily. I mean, scientists are the ultimate remixers. They're taking information from multiple different sources and trying to analyze it and say, well, how does this all work together? So we want to get that data up in a commons on the web so other users can use it for new uses, new experiments, new insights, and still give people who want some control an ability to keep some of that control. We're not trying to interfere with a rightful ownership of compounds, drugs, devices, but even these companies are recognizing that the upstream basic research that led to these discoveries needs to be shared. If we can systematically increase our chances of making big discoveries and decrease the likelihood that we're ignoring information that we should be using, then that's the best chance we have to get these breakthroughs and understanding about our bodies and about drugs. Because the world is filled with minds who can contribute. And when that information is shared, things just move faster.